I am Olivia Robertson, and I offer to be your guide to attain cosmic consciousness of the Goddess, Mother of all beings, through the mystical awakening of the Goddess Sekhmet in the constellation of Leo. I want you to have a glass of water nearby. You could turn off your tape and get one, and also anoint your brow with water. This helps to activate your third eye. Good. Please sit very, very comfortably, because we are going on a magical journey. I don't know what the date is for you, or where you are. I know one thing, though, you're in the future. You're a person I'm talking to in the future, and I'm a voice from the past but we are both one in eternal reality. How can we contact eternal reality? We move from planetary earthly consciousness to the sun and stars. Here we may be together. Please begin to rise from your body, yet retaining some earthly consciousness. Come back in time, back to the Opet festival of ancient Egypt, here enacted in the 20th century in the Temple of Isis, in Clonigal Castle, Ireland. For Nova the Irish, the Gaels are descended, it is said, in the Lagabala era on the ancient texts, from the Egyptian princess Scota, the Dark One, daughter of the Pharaoh Synchris. She gave her name, that Egyptian princess, to greater Scota, Ireland and to lesser Scota, Scotland, from which we Robertsons come from, though we were from the clan Donachy. The Gales were called after their son. She married Neil or Nell, a Scythian, and they had a son called Galeglass, G-A-E-L-G-L-A-S, and he declared that all his progeny should be called Gales. However, whatever country you come from, America, Africa, wherever, you all enjoy the constellation of Leo. Come with me then, back in time and change place to Ireland and look down upon a wood between two rivers that join, between the fork of two rivers, overlooked by a blue mountain in the Blackstairs Range, Mount Leinster, and this Hidden valley surrounded by hills. It is the evening before the festival of Opet, as the sun enters the constellation of Leo, leaving that of the crabs. The castle is a strange place because we sink underground to the holy temple of Isis of 10,000 names, Aset, whose divine husband is Osiris, Osa. We observe now that we are approaching a priestly group who are drawing water from an ancient well within the castle we see a beautiful priestess, beautiful that is in her aura, wearing the golden Hathor crown of Egypt. And she is drawing forth water. And another priestess wearing the lion crown of Sekhmet holds burning incense. And we see a stately priest wearing the full headdress of the pharaoh priest, black and blue, with a golden Eureus, a snake. And this is my brother, Lawrence Durden Robertson. 
But what are they doing? They appear to be preparing to leave the temple. They are headed by the priest holding the crook of Osiris and he's drawing them to a shrine. This is a temple of the zodiac and he is approaching the sacred shrine of Sekhmet. This shows a carved lion carved by one of his ancestors and a naked woman carved in local yew by my nephew David. This is the shrine of the goddess subduing the lion power, that lion power which is within the body. This is the tarot card, the enchantress who draws lion power up her body. And we see each of the priesthood and the congregation, about 40 people, salute Sekhmet. But they are leaving the temple, passing nine columns in the form of the L of Isis. And they are leaving the portico of the temple and approach an ancient avenue of yew trees, 600 years old. Try and see them now, holding burning incense. The priestess is carrying gold bowls containing well water. Slowly they cross the grass, and it is still light because it is after midsummer, Opet. And the moon is full, the moon of the god, the Khonsu. And the procession winds their way down a dark tunnel. Imagine yourself now going down a dark tunnel of ancient yew trees, reddish brown, trunks intertwine, they are so old, they intertwine with each other. And there's a light at the end, at the east. But the procession do not heed this, they turn sharply to the right. And you follow them into a wilderness with palm trees, fan palm trees and other exotic trees. So you could be anywhere, you could be in Egypt. Now, the priesthood turn to the left past two, not columns, but two sacred cypress trees. We are entering a sacred grove to the moon goddess, Isis Diana. The procession enters a whole circle of cypresses and we look up and they seem to reach the very stars and there's a plain circle of the sky right above our heads. And we gaze up. First priestess now takes a taper from the priest and lights a central fire. It blazes up suddenly and we remember that Lana's power is fire. She offers incense upon it, sprinkling incense on this fire, and the smoke reaches all. There must be balance. We have had incense of air and fire. So a second priestess, robed as Nephthys, with the moon upon her head, in silver robe, sprinkles water on the fire from her basin. At this point, the first priestess shakes the sistrum. Now we turn to the four quarters. First priest now sprinkles incense upon the altar and faces the north East. The second priestess offers incense on the fire in the southeast. Here, the second priest 
drops incense on the fire from the southwest. Now the first priestess sprinkles water on the altar. The company meditate. Let us also do so. Meditate on the Lan power within you. The Lan, the Lanus, and Virgo on your peaceful countenance, controlling the passions with your mind and spirit. You are the Andro Sphinx. Whether you be man or woman, these two powers are in harmony. Feel the fire on you as you sit around the fire here. Feel it rise within you. You feel vital, energized. The evening sky is darkening. So the fire looks brighter. Now the darkness is illumined as the full moon comes from behind a cloud. Solemnly now, the priestess of the moon, Nephthys, moves around our circle as we are seated and anoints each brow with these words. May the moon goddess Nephthys awaken in you spiritual vision. This represents Virgo, for we know now that the true constellation of Leo is one with Virgo, who is the serene face of the goddess with the body of the lion, the Andro Sphinx. We wonder what is to come that we are being soothed down with this water, for surely this is a ritual of Sekhmet. It is my privilege of this ceremony to call forth the land power. Holy Sekhmet, bring to us thy flame within the golden sun which is beneath the earth. We feel the flames rising up from the heart of the earth. Corleonis, heart of the Lana, star royal flame, red fire. Bring us thy flame. Sisters, brothers, feel the power rise up from the earth. Let it rise and shine and warm our hearts with love. It consecrates our sacral centers. It blesses the base of our spine and the cobra, Buto, begins to arise up our spine through our sacral center through the center of Sekhmet which is the solar plexus we feel it rise now from the spine to the heart but what is this I invoke Mut, the vulture goddess. The royal goddess, 
mirth descends upon us, the vulture-winged one, Holy Spirit, light divine. It descendeth upon the companions. It descendeth upon me, purely, beautifully, the light of the white spirit of Mut descends upon your head as softly as a bird. The white bird of Mut descends until it joins the fire of Sekhmet and both are one. The powers are blended. Now we feel the golden hawk of the sun, Horus, consort of Sekhmet, within our hearts, and we call upon the god Horus Ra. We call now upon the god of the moon, consort of Isis and of Nephthys, Konsu. The white power on the head is perfectly blended with Isis and Nephthys and Konsu and with, with Sekhmet and with Horus Ra. Our whole auras are irradiated. First priest solemnly approaches the fire. Round it in a star shape of 44 unlighted torches. He lights a red candle which he places in the south. Then he places his torch into the fire and holds it aloft. And behold this lighted red candle gaze upon its flame and see in it the symbol of the core Leonis, heart of the land, star royal, flame, red fire, are titles of noble regulus that shines in the land. The magi of Nineveh inscribed upon their clay tablets if the lucida of the land is gloomy, the heart of the people will not rejoice. This ardent star of kings rules the affairs of heaven. The Indians call it Maha, the mighty. It is the house of the moon, the eighth asterism, the nakshatra, and rules the royal stars of the land's head. These guardians of heaven mark the four cardinal points. At this point, two priestesses and two priests plunge their torches into the fire and they hold them aloft at the four quarters. Now, all the companions plunge torches into the fire and form a circle of 44 lights. The companions of their lighted torches dance. They dance in a circle and then a spiral dance. First, they draw power with their hands from the central fire. When they have done that, they call the other way, the path of the moon, to send forth the power to all. Come and join with me, why not? We dance round and round this fire, you and I drawing power from the central fire. Hold then the lighted torches in this path of the sun, drawing power. Then we go the other way, which is Widdershins, from right to left which is the path of the moon, the sending forth. And as we do this, we send forth good to all creatures. 
Now you too send forth love and healing outwards for any special intention you have as you dance. The idea that one has to be static healing is nonsense. You have a power flow in you. Oh, some do love to do it in meditation, but Sekhmet does it actually. So imagine yourself dancing uh, to the sound of the sistrum and sending forth blessing to any cause or people you have at heart. they dance, they feel an electric-like power, feel this electric-like power moving through you in a flame-like glow and coloured lights. Feel this purity of light, of colour, through you. Slowly, one by one, the companions drop to the ground and sit comfortably, leaning against a tree. Imagine yourself now, pretty hot by now, having danced, even if it's winter, summer here. And the first priestess draws the attention of the company to the sky, when a few stars are appearing. There's a few moments of silence as we feel the inner. Now the company rises and the priest gives thanks. We give thanks to Sekhmet, Bast, Ra. We give thanks to Nefertum. We give thanks to Alat. We give thanks to Shu and Tefnut. The company now bring their torches from the fire of Sekhmet, still blazing, right down the yew walk, far from the Lanus to the temple of Isis, where they extinguish their torches in her open portico, in a basin of water. Fire and water are one. Leo and Mut. And we honour the sacred trinity of Sekhmet Bashd Ra, of the power of the sun, and her consort Ta, the creator, architect, god, and their divine son, Khonsu, the moon. But even as I speak to you, the figures here in their lovely robes begin to look rather like ghosts. You and I watch them form a procession back, back to the temple of Isis. We know they go back to enjoy their festival, their feast. But you do not belong to this time. You belong to the future. Return to your own time and place. You are now back in your own body feeling better than you did before. Are they? Salve, vale. <laughs>